Welcome to another Revel University video tutorial. This video will cover the basics of building your product list or menu in Revel. As with all of our tutorials, you can jump ahead to any topic that is most important to you. All tutorials have a table of contents listed below in the description with links to each chapter. Before we begin, let's first define a product in Revel. Depending on your business type, the terms product or product list can be used interchangeably with the term menu. Essentially, your products are all the items your business sells and that you need to track on your point of sale. In Revel, products are organized in a three-tier structure with categories at the highest level, subcategories next, and all products are listed within subcategories. Your categories and subcategories are used to help organize your product list on the management console and on the point of sale. So let's get started with all the ways that you can add a product to Revel. In the management console, navigate to the products tab. A menu bar appears on the left with additional options, which we'll learn more about later. For now, let's take a look at adding products. One way to add a product is on the product page. Throughout these training videos, we'll work from the same account and build out a management console together. Since we don't have any products in the system, we'll need to create our first category. Click the plus category option and give the category a name. My business is a small cafe that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner options so I'll create categories to reflect those options. So in building out my menu, I want to create it the way that it looks on a printed menu. In this case, we'll start with breakfast items. Since my breakfast menu is fairly simple, I'm going to label my category as breakfast and I'll label my subcategory the same. And here's your first pro tip. If you don't need three levels of categorization, you can skip a level by labeling the category and subcategory exactly the same. In this case, if I create a category called breakfast and a subcategory called breakfast, on my point of sale, I'll only have to select breakfast once to see all of my breakfast items. So I'll go ahead and add a few plates here. As I add my products, I can choose to include the cost of the item. This represents the cost to your business, while the next field for price represents the amount charged to your customers. The sort field arranges items on the point of sale screen from left to right based on number. So number one would be the top left position. If you realize you add something out of sequence based on your preference, Simply renumber the items and they will sort in that order on both the management console and the point of sale. Note, there's also a sort A to Z option that will automatically sort categories, subcategories, and or products in alphabetical order. By default, the newly added products will be active. If you no longer offer an item, you can uncheck the active box to deactivate the product. Please note, however, that once a product is added to the system, it cannot be deleted. Your only option is to mark it as inactive so it no longer displays on your menu by default. A blue arrow will appear to the right of any item that you are adding or editing. Clicking the arrow either closes the item, omitting any changes, or deletes an empty unsaved row. To delete a row, simply click on the blue arrow that coincides with the line that you would like to delete. Once I have my products added, I will choose to save at the top right. If your product list isn't super complex, this method is a very easy way to add items. However, we still have a few other options for adding products in the management console. If I click the plus add option, at the top right, a drop-down menu will appear for you to add products two other ways. The first allows us to add just a little bit more detail to the products as we add them to the system. Add any details here you'd like and save. 
And finally, we have the advanced product add option. This allows us to manage all the details of a product when we initially add them to the system. We won't spend a ton of time on product details just yet. For more on this, be sure to check out our Master Product Settings article linked below. There's one final way to add products in the Management Console, but before we explore that option, let's take a look at a few things on the screen after products are added. The first option, a barcode symbol, simply allows you to mouse over the icon to see the product's barcode or SKU. The R icon allows you to create a recipe for your products. This is a bit more of an advanced feature, so be sure to check out our separate tutorial on ingredients and recipes linked below. Next, we have the Modifiers button. If you are a restaurant, most likely you'll need modifiers for any modifications you allow your customers to make to your default products. This includes things like adding extra cheese, no mayonnaise, etc. This is covered in greater detail in our modifiers tutorial and article, but this is where you assign modifiers to each product as necessary. The double M icon allows you to copy modifiers from one product to another. You'll see how this works a little bit later. As the clipboard icon is a shortcut to the product's inventory information. You can manage things here like the unit of measure, who the default vendor is for the product, and more. This is also covered in greater detail in our inventory video linked below. The two boxes stacked on top of each other is a clone option, which just allows you to duplicate a product entirely. This would include all the product details like the modifiers, ingredients, etc. Finally, we have the pencil icon, which takes us to the full product details, where you can further customize the product. Now that you know all about products in the system, let me show you one of the easiest ways to build your product list if you have a more complex or robust list of items. Revel's import-export function is available throughout the system to make it easy for you to add additional information without manually spending a ton of time in the Management Console. At the bottom left of the Products tab, you'll see the Import-Export function. And from here, note that you can choose to import products, ingredients, modifiers, and more. So let's see how this works with products. First, you have a few different options for exporting the file that you'll use. The basic export will export all of the required fields in the system, like the product category, subcategory, product name, price, and so on. You can choose to export only active items here and also have the system create barcodes for you. The next option is the advanced export option. Here, you can filter the sheet to only include items that are part of a particular category or subcategory, along with a few other filters. Then, you can choose to include additional columns on the spreadsheet for more details. For example, maybe you'd like to color code your items so that certain categories are in yellow, other categories are in orange, and so on or maybe you want to indicate which kitchen printers an item should print to. Simply check the boxes for the additional columns. When you export the spreadsheet, those will be editable fields on the sheet. Now let's take a look at our exported file. Once I export my file, notice that the products I've already added appear. So not only can I build my menu from scratch on the spreadsheet, but we can also edit the menu at any point in the future. The fields you want to be cautious with are the SKU and barcode fields. Notice that when I added my breakfast items to the system previously, the system created a barcode for them. If I attempt to change the barcode here, when I import the file, the item will be duplicated. One product with the old barcode and one with the new. Every other field on the spreadsheet can be edited without worry. Just use caution with the SKUs and barcodes as these are the unique identifiers for each product in the system. A few other things to keep in mind when filling out the template. We'll call these additional pro tips. 
First, any new category or subcategory imported through the spreadsheet will be automatically populated in the backend under the Products tab. Category and subcategory duplication will result if capitalization and spacing do not match across products. To ensure consistency across all cells, use the click and drag function or copy and paste to rapidly populate all relevant fields. Every product must have a SKU or barcode. These numbers may be a manufacturer's barcode or completely arbitrary, but they must be at least five digits long. This number is used as a reference by the system when making any additional edits to the product. If you do not typically use barcodes, such as in a QSR or TSR setting, a good rule of thumb here is to simply start labeling the first few products in order, starting with 10,001, 10,002, 10,003, and so on. Then you can click and drag to number the rest of your items sequentially. The active column requires a yes or no response and indicates whether the product will be displayed on the point of sale. If active is set to no, the product will still import to the management console, but will be inactive and will not show on the point of sale. And lastly, if a column is not filled in correctly, the system will reject the file. Note, above each column are examples of a single product with the appropriate input. Each column also includes a tooltip that is revealed when hovered over. So here's an example of how I would create my menu. Fill out the category, subcategory, and product names. Remember, you can easily copy and paste existing categories or click and drag to duplicate. Enter in the price and fill out any other product details. Follow the same steps to enter more items. Once the spreadsheet is complete, save it to your computer. To import, navigate back to the Products tab, select Import Export, and then Products. In the bottom section, you'll see the option to import products. Click on Choose File, then select the file from your computer and click Import. The results of the import will be emailed to the email address of the employee logged into the management console. But results can be emailed to a different address by inputting the new email in the corresponding field during the import. And if we return back to our products tab, you'll notice that we've successfully imported menu items using the spreadsheet template. And that's how easy it is to get an entire menu built in Revel using our import export function. Now let's see how you can make quick changes to the product list on the point of sale. If you prefer, you can build or update your menu on the point of sale, which is what the product setup feature allows you to do. In order to use this function, you'll need to be logged in as a manager or owner, or you can assign the specific role permission to any role that you choose. For more information on employee roles and permissions, check out that article linked below. From the dashboard screen, tap the product setup option. You will see any existing menu items here separated by your categories and subcategories. If you want to add a new product to an existing category or subcategory, navigate to the appropriate location and then tap the add product button. The required fields for adding a new product are the product name and price. You can also enter additional details like a description, cost, and so on. Once you've entered the product details, tap Save. Now, your new product can be added to orders. Similar to adding a new product to the system, you can also add a new category or subcategory. Just navigate to the appropriate level on your menu and tap Add Category or Add Subcategory. Input the name and tap Save. And to add products to the newly created category or subcategory, again, simply tap the Add Product button. To edit an existing product, navigate to and tap on the item. 
Here, you can change any of the product details by tapping the field and entering the new information. All additions and changes will show in the Management Console. If you have additional POS terminals, remember to refresh them in order to see the changes. Tap Exit to return to the dashboard screen. Now are you ready to see what our menu looks like on the point of sale? From the dashboard, tap New Order. You'll see your menu on the right with the customer order on the left. Navigate using your categories and subcategories to locate your products. As you add items to the order, they appear on the left. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Check out our point of sale tutorials linked below for more information about managing your orders. Thank you for watching another Revel University video tutorial. We hope that you were able to follow along and complete the necessary steps. If you have additional questions, please review the help articles linked below or contact our support team for assistance.